Do you enjoy living like some kind of gremlin, hiding away beneath the depths of the earth, rummaging through your riches? Well, do I have a treat for you, because I won't be creating just a regular old underground base. This time, I'll be showing you how to create the ultimate underground base. And now uh, let's just get right into the tour. What do you want to order? Alright, so starting off the tour at, of course, the entrance, and similar to all of my other underground base tutorials, the entrance to this base is completely hidden from the outside. And what you have to do to open up the door to this base, which is right here, throw any item on top of this block right here, and as you can see, the base will open. Now the redstone for this base is a lot simpler compared to my previous videos. in that we only have two pistons this time with a lot less redstone overall this is pretty much all that there is to it and this design should definitely work with bedrock which I had some problems with my previous tutorial on so I'm praying that this works if it doesn't please end my suffering and now with that done let's take a look at the actual base so as you might be able to see, this base is two stories tall and it has a bunch of different sections in it. And let's first start off with the entrance section here. And what we can do is go ahead and actually grab our item back that we used to open the door with right here in this barrel. And then we can use this button to close the door from the inside. Now, before we head down the elevator, let's take a look at all of the top floor sections, starting off with this section here, which is the fully automatic sugarcane farm. All you have to do to turn it on is flick this lever right here and the minecart will go back and forth and just constantly pick up all of the harvested sugarcane thanks to the pistons and observers up here. And then this minecart goes over this hopper here which deposits it straight into our storage section down below and we'll get to that once we get to the first floor. Now turning to the left once again we have our enchanting area. This is just a pretty bog standard enchanting area, nothing really special here. Heading over into the next section we have our bedroom. We have some nice little decorations here and we have a bunch of barrels as well for your personal storage like things that you want to keep kind of easy to access and on hand whenever you wake up from your bed. And we also have a couple of secret barrels as well. This one is not very secret but we have one that is underneath the bed here you might be able to see it right there and to access it it is actually very difficult without removing the bed there you go as you can see if we crouch and right click in the right spot we should be able to access it just like so now heading over to the brewing area as you can see this area pretty much consists of these two sections here we have our brewing stands with some nice storage above and then we also have our nether wart farms now heading over to the next section we have our wither boss kind of statue thing I guess I was running out of ideas for what else to put in all of these sections so this one's kind of just a decorative piece but the idea is that you'd put your collected wither heads above here and then when you have three you know you have enough to summon the boss or you could leave them all there just for the decoration something else as well you might notice that there is a lot of netherite blocks there's some here and also a bunch down on the bottom and that's kind of the whole challenge of this base and also the fact that it's the ultimate base is that it uses a lot of netherite blocks so you can kind of use some placeholder blocks in the meantime but the idea is to slowly fill these all up over time now heading over to our next section we have an indoor farm area Area. Now this section is exactly the same as the one over there, so I'm not gonna really bother going over there again. Yeah, this just consists of a total of four different sections. We have a bunch of storage as well up there, and also a bunch of composters for each section. We have our ladder here that goes up to the second floor. And now the final thing we have over here is a nice aquarium that extends all the way down to the bottom floor as well. There was a bunch of fish in here, and I don't know where they went. And now that brings us... And now that brings us back over to our elevator here. So the right side where the bubbles are, of course, is the one that pushes you up. So this one would be accessed from the bottom, but this one here sucks you down. All you have to do is just open the door and bang, you're on the first floor. Now, once again, let's head over to the left. And in this section here, you can see we have our massive storage area. Now this top chest here, as you can see, is the one with the hopper pointing down into it. So this is where all of our sugar canes will collect. Ah, uh, don't worry about that. And yeah, so just a bunch of double chests, nice, easy storage. To the left of this, for ease of use, we have our crafting area right next to it with all of the crafting blocks you'll ever need. Feel free to replace some of the decorations with some other crafting blocks if any other exist. Oh, there is the map table, eh? Yeah, you could probably chuck that there and put the anvil here if you really needed that. <laughs> Heading over to the next section, we have our super smelter. This one, of course, expands over two different sections here. So to use the super smelter, all you have to do is head over here. In this chest here, chuck in your ores and in the back chest here, chuck in your fuel. Then you just turn the lever on and these hoppers in a minecart will go back and forth and just deposit all of your items into the furnaces 
boxes here. And then the finished product will be heading out of these hoppers and into this chest right here. And that's all there really is to the super smelter. And then over here on this side are just some regular furnaces, just in case if you needed some regular furnaces over here. Now heading to the left once again at the back wall, we have a bunch of animal farms. So we have three separated pens with a bunch of storage above all of them as well. Then to the left of this, we have a toggleable nether portal. The left side will turn the nether portal on and then flicking the button twice on the right side will turn it off. So once to deploy the bucket and then again to absorb the water. <laughs> and then we also have this fence gate here in case if any piglins decide to enter your realm. I don't know why that always happens to me. I feel like it happens to everyone else as well, so I add this in. And then this also blocks the water as well from going everywhere inside your base. Now heading to the left once again, we have our aquarium again uh, with no fish. And then to the left, in our second to last final section here, we have another smelting area just with a bunch of regular furnaces and also some nice storage above here and a couple of cool little decorations. And then in our final section, we have just another storage area. Because it is an ultimate base, I felt it needed a bunch of storage, so there you go. That's definitely not an excuse to me not knowing what to fill the rest of the sections with. And then all we have to do to head up to the second floor and out of the base if we wanted is just step inside here, close the door as we go up, and bang, we're up at the second floor. And yeah, so that pretty much concludes the tour. If you like the look of this base and want to create it for yourself, feel free to stick around and we'll get started on the tutorial right now. Alright, so the first thing you're going to have to do is find an area similar to this. It's basically just on the side of a giant hill. Then you're going to have to come down to the side of it, like so, and ensure that it's at least four blocks high on the front face here. And also make sure that it's four blocks high for a great area beyond that as well. As you can see, ours just continues going up. Make sure it doesn't go like back down or something weird. I don't think there's really any areas that do that, but just make sure there's a nice amount of area to work with. Next, we're going to come down to the front face here and mark out where we want our door to be. I'm just going to destroy these two blocks to mark out our door. Now to the left of this, we're going to have to do a little bit of landscaping. So grab out some dirt or grass blocks. And to the left of this, we're going to have to ensure that there's at least three blocks like this kind of extended to the left. And that's in order to cover up the redstone in the pistons. Now we can just place some additional grass blocks around it to kind of make it look like natural generation, I guess. Just like that. That looks pretty normal to me. Maybe even place one up here as well, just for good measure. Then to the right of this, we're going to have to go three blocks. So one, two, three. And then on this block here, just make sure there is a block like so. And and then we can just connect this up to the surrounding landscape to make it look natural once again. Maybe add some blocks up there too. Now this block here is where we're going to be throwing our item on. So let's actually mark it out with a piece of grass or even a flower or something like that. And now that's pretty much all of the exterior work that we need to do for the entire base. So from this point here, let's dig in an additional three blocks. So one, two, three. And then on the third block here, we're going to destroy this block and replace it with a spruce slab. This is just to mark out where our kind of step down into the actual base is going to be. And now before we get into the actual base design, we of course have to make all of the redstone for the entrance, which thankfully is a lot easier compared to all of my last underground base designs. So let's get started on that right now. So firstly, let's head one block directly inside of our entrance here and to the left, let's remove these two blocks and then another two. And then we're gonna be replacing these final blocks here with some sticky pistons. To the right of this, let's clear out a bit of an area to work with. We're gonna go all the way back here, maybe four blocks past the piston like so and remove all of these blocks as well. Now directly behind the bottom piston here, let's place a block and on top of it, a redstone dust. Now we're going to dig a little bit below this and below this block here, let's throw on a redstone torch and this should activate both of the pistons. This will definitely work on Java. I've watched a video on someone building this in bedrock. So if this doesn't work, I swear to God, men, but uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments if it doesn't work and I'll try and post a fix for it. Now we're going to dig out a little bit more of an area down below the torch here. We're going to go one block below. Then on the third block away from this. So one, two, three on this block here, we're going to be placing a dropper and this one's going to be facing upwards. Then on top of this here, we're going to be placing one that's facing outwards. And then finally, another one here that's facing in towards our dropper that's facing upwards. Then on top of this final dropper here, let's throw on a hopper. Then in front of this dropper here, let's place a comparator facing directly into the block that the redstone torch is on. Now let's throw in an item on this bottom right dropper here. I'm just going to put in a stone block. It doesn't really matter what you put in. And then we can test this out by putting a button on this dropper here. And then let's flick the button. Your whole piston system should deactivate like so, and then pressing it again should activate it. And then we can just cycle this a few times to make sure that it's working. It's definitely working. Now we can remove this button because we don't need it anymore. Now that's the actual door system done. Now we have to hook up our actual activation system over here. And to do that, we're first going to be placing our barrel that we'll be collecting our items back with. So let's stand directly on top of this spruce slab here, and we're going to dig in by an additional one block. And then from this point here, we're going to be going right by two blocks. And then on this bottom block here, we're going to be replacing it with a 
barrel. Now this should be directly in line with our block outside that we're gonna be using. So we can dig a tunnel directly to that block. And then once we reach this point here, let's go outside and actually remove the blocks like so. And there we go. As you can see, we're perfectly in line with it. Now let's just remove a couple more blocks and then we can head back inside and let's dig an additional block directly below our block up here that we'll be using to activate the system. And then we'll be digging another row like so, all the way linking back up to our barrel here. And we'll be replacing all of these blocks with some hoppers that are connected from the barrel all the way up until underneath our grass block here. It might be kind of tricky to place this. You might actually have to replace this grass block in order to place this hopper in here. And there we go, nice and easy. Now let's head back inside. On top of this hopper here, we're gonna place a rail and on top of that, a minecart with a hopper. And now to test that this whole system works, we can just go ahead and head outside, chuck an item on top of our grass block here. It should disappear instantly. And then it should be inside of our barrel, just like so. If it's not in your barrel, check any of these hoppers. If it's stuck in a hopper, then this hopper might be facing the wrong way or something like that. Now we're gonna be connecting up one of these hoppers to our system here with a comparator so that it knows that the door has been opened. So let's head directly to the left of our redstone torch over here. And we're gonna dig a little tunnel that leads all the way over to one of the hoppers right here. And so facing away from this hopper, we're gonna be placing a comparator, then a repeater directly in front of it to extend the signal outwards. Then we're gonna be placing some redstone dust. So we're gonna place two like so, and we should be in line with our pistons here. And from this point, we're gonna be going to the right by one. And then let's just remove all of these blocks. Then we're gonna go to the right with our redstone dust. And we're actually gonna go up one here into this block. And this is where our button from the inside is gonna be. We can actually quickly throw that in right now. So directly to the right of this section here, we're gonna remove some more blocks. And then on this block right here, the very bottom most one, we're gonna put our button on. And if you remove the block here, you should see our redstone dust is directly connected up to it. Now let's head back over here. And we're gonna be adding another repeater right here on a full tick of delay. And that's so we have enough time to press our button from the inside and run outside of the base before the door closes. Now with only one repeater, it is still pretty quick. You're gonna have to actually sprint out as soon as you place the button. So if you feel that is too quick for you, you can place another repeater and then just kind of customize the amount of ticks for your liking. Now all that's left to do is just hook up the redstone dust all the way around up until our bottom right most dropper right here. And that's it for all of the redstone. All we have to do now is just kind of cover everything else back up and also just cover this hole up here and then come back outside and replace all of these blocks as well. And also this block here too and also our blocks for the entrance. All right, now with all those holes patched up, let's actually test out the entrance. So we're just gonna throw an item directly on top of this grass block here. And after a short delay, the door should open. Now we can head inside and press this button and the door should close. That was uh, an accident. <laughs> now, if you're having some problems with the button actually not opening or closing the door sometimes, or same with the outside here, if you're throwing an item on and it's not working, what I'd recommend doing is replacing this redstone dust here with a repeater. Sometimes the item doesn't fully cycle around in the T flip flop here and I've found out that a repeater actually fixes that most of the time. But keep in mind that'll add an extra tick of delay. So you could actually turn this back to this tick here in order to kind of not make it any longer if you wanted it to. And yeah, so that's it for the entrance design. Now it's onto the actual base design. And starting off, we're actually gonna replace all of these blocks here that have coal and turn them into some stone blocks. And then we're also gonna cover up this gap as well. All right, so for this next part, we're gonna be excavating the entire area for the base. And I've had to bust out the old Giga Chad pickaxe for this one. And I would strongly strongly recommend that you use something very similar to this as we're gonna be doing a lot of excavating. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and stand right in front of this slab right here in between the button and also our barrel that is under here, but uh, we'll be fixing this up later, don't worry. And so from this point here, we're going to be going forwards by 19 blocks. So one, two, three, and then all the way up until 19. Seven. Oh, mate. Well, if you have something like this, then you don't have to do a lot of excavating, just a lot of wall building, but uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and fix this up. Okay, starting back here. So one, two. Eighteen and nineteen. There we go. Now let's actually quickly double check this before we continue, as we really want to make sure this is nineteen blocks long. Twenty, including the one we're starting on. So this is one, two, three. 1920. All right, so we're all good. We've made sure that our distance is 20, including the block we were standing on, or 19, just starting from this block here. And now what it's time to do is to push the left and right side walls each by nine blocks. And we're gonna be doing this one block past our button here and one block past our barrel that is under there. So just for an example, we're gonna go one, two, eight and nine. And we're gonna do this pretty much all the way on this side, all the way up until we reach the edge here. And then the same thing on this side. All right, and there we go. This is how your area should look. I uh, definitely didn't do that all with welded it. Don't 
worry about that. So this is our entire base kind of circumference, or I don't really know what to call it, but this is like the base area. And now all we need to do is go up and down. And so we'll be expanding this entire area up by two. So we're gonna do this to the entire roof, and then we're gonna be going down by five and doing this to the entire floor. So one, two, three, four, five. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, and there we go. This is how your base should look right now. And the next thing we're gonna do is ensure that every exposed block is a stone block. So we're just gonna have to go around the entire walls, ceiling and the floor and just make sure it is all stone. All right, and now the first section we're gonna be creating is our elevator as we're gonna be going up and down quite a bit throughout the base and it's just easier to create this now. So what we're gonna do is stand right here directly in front of our slab and then to the left and right of this block here, we're gonna dig all the way down to the bottom on both sides just like this. Then we're gonna go one block further into the ground like so and then on the left side, we're gonna be placing a magma block and on the right side, a soul sand. Now let's quickly stand on top of the magma block and place in your door like so and then we're gonna do the same thing on the soul sand block as well. Now directly above these doors we're going to be placing some upside down spruce stairs so just place another one like this in order for us to be able to place one like so and then we're going to do the same on this side and then directly above it we're going to place a single glass block just like so and then above these we're going to be placing two slabs like this or you can use planks it doesn't really matter and we're just going to extend it out by five blocks like so so it's five blocks long then in between the two glass blocks we're going to place a lantern and then on the left and right side of the glass blocks we're going to place a spruce fence gate now let's head inside of our door and actually just replace this block here with a stone block and we're going to be filling up our entire column here with water source blocks making sure that each block placed is an actual water source because if you just place one at the top it is not going to work each block has to be a water source so let's do the same thing on the right side as well and there we go our right side should be pushing us up and then the left side will suck us down and that's the elevator pretty much done. Now we're gonna go around and add in all of our pillars around the entire base, starting with the ones left and right of the elevator that we just created. So we're gonna be placing our first one like this, which is pretty much directly one block left to the elevator here. And then we're gonna do the same on this side. And in between these two pillars, we should have a gap of five blocks, one, two, three, four, five. And each gap between all of the pillars around the base are going to be five blocks. So let's just quickly go around and place all of the first blocks of all the pillars. So the next one over here should be right in the corner, ensuring that there is a gap of five in between and then we're going to do the same pretty much just around the entire base and there we go that's all of the outlines done and now we're just going to be raising all of these up to the ceiling And there we go, there's all the pillars raised up. Now let's create the balcony for the second floor. And to do this, we're gonna align ourselves up with the top of these slabs here, and we're gonna be extending these out by an additional two blocks. So from the pillar here, these are gonna go out by two blocks, and then we're going to wrap this all the way around like so, making sure that they're all sticking out by three blocks or two blocks from the pillar. Now with all of that added in, we're going to go around once again and add an additional block below in between the pillars like we have done here. So we're just going to be adding an additional slab layer like so, all the way around the base. Now let's head up the elevator and do pretty much the exact same thing to the top here. So we're just going to add a single layer of slabs in between all of the pillars along the ceiling. All right, now that we've been brought back to our entrance here, let's actually add in the extra little details for the elevator section up here. So we're gonna excavate an additional three stone blocks here, and then in the corners, let's add in some spruce stairs. Let's also ensure that all of our exposed blocks are stone. And I'm also gonna fix up the hallway a little bit as well and just add in some extra stone so it looks a little nicer. And then in between these two stair blocks here, we're going to add a lantern. I'm just gonna grab this one from down here. And then the final thing here is to just replace this stone block with an upside down stone stair block, and then also cover in this gap with a stone block. All right, so with our elevator section all completely done, let's head into the left section and add in our fully automatic sugarcane farm. Now in hindsight, I'd recommend switching this with a section closer towards the back of the base as there are pistons that constantly activate that are harvesting the sugarcane blocks. So it can't actually be heard from the outside if it's too close to the outside. So yeah, I'd pretty much recommend switching this with maybe the wither statue section over there. And now, yeah, I'm just going to build it here for the sake of the video. And yeah, so firstly, what we're going to do is excavate this entire area and we're going 
gonna push it three blocks back. So one, two, three, and then yeah, let's just do that to the entire section. All right, now with that done, let's make sure that these dirt blocks are replaced with stone. We don't really have to worry too much about the back layer here as it's gonna be covered up by some redstone components anyway. So next, let's actually grab out some scaffolding. We're gonna place a couple like this. And now let's actually add in our grass block layer first to mark things out. So we're gonna go in the center of this stone section here, one block above the ground and just place in a strip of grass like so. Then behind it, one block below, we're gonna add in some stone blocks like this in order to hold our water in. We can just place one water bucket to create a stream. Now directly above this stream of water, let's add in some additional stone blocks like so. Then we're gonna have to remove this rectangle of blocks here. So just remove all of these blocks. Then let's jump back here. And then in line with these stone blocks that we just added in, we're going to have to add in a row of observers all the way across like this. Then we're gonna have to replace these blocks that we just excavated. So just place all of these in and also excavate a little area out here so you can actually stand out here. And then on top of all of these blocks, let's add in some redstone dust. And then we can refill this little area in and there we go. Now directly below all of these observers, we're gonna be adding in a row of just regular pistons. And then on top of all of the grass blocks, we can chuck in some sugar canes. And on top of one of them, we can just test out the system by adding some extra sugar canes. And you should see all of the pistons get activated at the same time, pushing the sugar cane down onto the grass blocks. Now to the right and left of our pistons here, we're gonna destroy these blocks and replace any dirt with some stone. And on these blocks, we're gonna be adding some lanterns in just for a little extra light. And we can remove our scaffolding now. Below the grass here on this level, we're actually gonna remove this block in the center here and replace it with a hopper facing downwards. So just right click on the block below it. Then on top of this, we're gonna place a regular rail and then to the left and right of that, some more regular rails. And then at the very ends, we're gonna place some powered rails. Now to power this rail, we can remove this block here and just chuck a lever on like so and turn it on. And then for the left side one over here, we're gonna place our stone block like so and then our lever on and this one should be able to activate it nice and easy. And now we're gonna seal the front up, but before we do, let's chuck in our minecart with a hopper right here. And now we can seal up the entire front. So in front of all of the grass blocks here, we're gonna be placing some polished andesite blocks in a row just like this. Then above these, we're gonna place in a three block high row of glass like so. Then on the right side down here, we're gonna place another stone block and fill in the remaining blocks all with some glass. And there we go, that's it for our fully automatic sugarcane section. Now moving on to our enchanting area to the left. For this one, again, we're gonna have to excavate a three block deep area all the way along like so. Next, we're gonna be replacing these blocks here with some spruce slabs for the floor. Now let's excavate a little bit extra area all the way up here. And we're gonna be replacing all of these blocks with some bookshelves. Now to the left and right of this, let's add in some additional bookshelves all the way up like so, just one block below the ceiling. And to ensure that we reach a full level 30 in the enchanting table, just make sure that one of these corner blocks here is a bookshelf block. And then we can just do the exact same thing we did here and fill in this side with our bookshelves. Now in front of all of these bookshelves, let's add in some barrels and we'll do the same thing on the other side, of course. And then for the roof here, we're gonna add a little bit of a ring of stone stairs. So let's first start in front of this barrel here, place in some stone stairs, and then we're going to pretty much just wrap this around the entire area like so. And then finally, let's place our lantern directly above our enchanting table. And that's it for the enchanting area. Heading over to our next section, we're gonna be adding in our bedroom. And for this one, we're gonna to have to excavate six blocks deep. Now, with our area excavated, let's add in a row of slabs directly in front of these slabs here, just one block up like so. And then we're gonna do the same thing in again, and this time these are gonna be some full blocks. And then we can just fill in the rest of the floor using some spruce slabs all the way across like so, and just fill in the entire area. Now on top of these slabs here that are one block in from these slabs, if that makes any sense, we're gonna be placing some stripped spruce wood blocks like so. And then above at the very top as well in line with them, we're gonna be placing some more. Then to the left of these, we're gonna place a row of stone blocks like this on both sides. And then to the right of these, we're gonna place a row of barrels on both sides, of course. Then at the very back here, let's add in some more stripped spruce wood blocks like so. And then to get the ones placed in here, we're gonna to have to place some ones up there and then place these ones so that they're pointing the right way. And then in between these, let's place some spruce stairs. The bottom ones are gonna be upside down. And then in the middle here, let's add in some oak leaves. If you don't want like a weird gap to be visible back here, just place in a stone block like this and then just place your leaves back. Now I actually messed up. Don't place these top barrels in, my bad. Because what we're actually doing is adding in a ring of spruce stairs, kind of like what we did on the enchanting area. So we're gonna start this right in front of the barrels and then we're gonna curve it around like so. And then when we get back to these stripped spruce wood blocks here, we're gonna stand like this in order to place the stairs like so. And let's just do the same on this 
side as well. Now in this gap here, let's place in a barrel and then we're gonna do the same on this block here, place another barrel if you want that secret barrel that I showed in the intro. Then we're also gonna replace these two slabs with some red carpet and then on top of that, let's chuck our bed on. And then in a ring around the bed here, let's add in some red carpet, just like so. Now let's place some armor stands on top of these strip spruce wood blocks and on the left one, just chuck in whatever armor you want. I'm going with some gold and then on the right side, I'm chucking in some iron armor. And then to finish off the bedroom, we're just gonna chuck our lantern right here. Moving on to the next section, you'll be grateful that we only have to remove one layer of blocks this time. Along the top, chuck in a row of barrels like so and beneath it on the left and right corners, add in some spruce stairs and then below and in front of those, chuck in some spruce trap doors. In the very middle in between these two spruce trap doors, add a lantern on. Then we're gonna remove these three blocks and replace them with some bookshelves. Now at the bottom here on the left and right side, we're gonna add two polished andesite blocks and in the center here, we're gonna stand like this and place some polished stairs so that we can add in some water like so. Then on top of the full blocks, let's just add in some brewing stands. And then the last thing to do is just add in some signs all the way across in front of these polished andesite blocks like so. And that's it for our brewing area. Moving on to our nether wart farm. This time we're gonna have to excavate two blocks deep. Then along the very bottom here, we're gonna add in some soul sand all the way across except for the last block here. And then one block spaced above this, we're gonna add in another rectangle of soul sand like so. And on top of all of these, we can just chuck in some nether warts. Now on the right side here, let's add in a row of stone back. And on top of all of these, we're gonna place in some ladders. Then we can climb these to go up and place in our additional nether warts along the top here. Now to the left of the ladders here, we're gonna add in a row of barrels all the way across to the end. And then we can jump back down and then just simply place some spruce trap doors in front of all of the soul sand blocks like so. And then the last thing to do is just chuck a lantern on right here. And that's it for the nether wart section. Now heading over to our next section, we can add in our wither statue. So for this one, we're gonna excavate two blocks in. At the very bottom here, in this row here, we're gonna add in a row of stone slabs. And then above it, we're gonna replace these stone blocks back. Then at the back here, we're gonna add in a checkered pattern of polished andesite and blocks of netherite. Now, understandably, if you don't have a lot of blocks of netherite to spare, a good substitute for this is some polished basalt. This looks really nice as well. And I'll show how it looks with both variants. So starting at the top left here, we're gonna place some polished andesite and then pretty much just in a checkered pattern we're going to be placing in some more polished andesite in all of the gaps just like this and now in all of the remaining gaps we can place in some blocks of netherite and this is how it looks with the netherite and then we can just place it in with some basalt to see how it looks like that and there you go, that's how it looks with basalt. It's up to you, I kind of prefer the blocks of netherite, but understandably it is very expensive, so I understand if you want to substitute that block. But like I said in the tour, the whole idea is to eventually replace all of the placeholder blocks with some blocks of netherite. Next, we're gonna be creating a T shape of polished andesite in front of these. So you could actually leave out this block of netherite if you really wanted to. And after creating our T shape, let's just place an extra block. And then on top of these, we're gonna be placing some wither skeleton skulls. And also understandably, you might not have three of these yet. The idea is to fill these up as you get more and then when you have three you know you can spawn in the wither boss and yeah so that's it for our wither statue heading over to the next section we're going to be adding in our first indoor farm area and to do this we're going to be excavating a two block deep area and this is going to expand across to the other section over here as well and all of this is going to be two blocks deep and so once you've excavated these two areas we're just going to of course remove the extra stone that's left in the corner here and we should be left with an area looking kind of like this next we're going to remove these three pillar blocks and replace the top one with a spruce slab. Then we're going to grab out some dirt and add all of our farmland areas in, starting from the left here. So let's place in some dirt and we're going to expand this all the way over five blocks wide like so. Then behind it here, we're going to remove this block and also this one and this one for the meantime. On this one here, we're going to place some water and then we can replace our stone block above it. And then in this gap here, let's place in a lantern. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but up one layer. So we're going to leave a gap of one, place in your row of dirt like so. And then to get up there, let's actually quickly just add our ladder in. So we're going to add in some strips spruce wood blocks like so. Then on front of it, let's add in some ladders. And then we can also place in some spruce slabs for the floor up here as well. And just extend it all the way across like so. Now we can head up our ladder, remove this block, place in our lantern, and then remove these two, place in our water, and then place this block back. And now let's quickly just repeat this on the other side as well. Now it's time to grab out your hoe and just till all of the dirt and then plant in your crop of choice in each one. Also just a side note, if you don't like this little gap here where you can see the water, you can just place in a stone slab, but this water will stay there as it's just a waterlogged slab now. So it's up to you if you wanna add that in or not. Next, we're going to add some spruce trap doors covering up all of the dirt blocks like so. 
Then heading in here, we're gonna be adding some composters on these blocks and then to the left of those and right of this one, we're gonna add some more spruce trap doors. Then let's head up our ladder and up here, we're gonna be adding in a row of barrels. So we're gonna be adding five in total like this. And then on this block here, we can also add in an additional composter and then let's just do the same on this side. And there we go, that's it for our indoor farm area. And this entire section is basically mirrored over here in this corner as well. So with the power of editing, we're all done, nice and easy. Now the last section for the entire top floor is actually the aquarium here. And for this, we're gonna be of course expanding this over the first and second floor. And this is going to be four blocks deep. So one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do this to this entire rectangle. All right now with our area excavated, we're of course actually going to be removing this row of slabs here. And then also these slabs up here as well. So we're lining ourselves up with the center here. We're going to remove this strip and then to the left and right by one block like so. And then we're also going to be replacing these with some just regular slabs. Next, let's add in our sea lanterns to actually light up the interior of our aquarium. And the first two are going to be two blocks spaced above from the ground. So one, two, and then we're going to place two like so. And then you might need to grab out some scaffolding for this part. We're just going to build a big thing going up like so. And then these next ones are going to be one block down from the ceiling like so. And then we're also going to put one right in the center up here. Well, it's not really in the center, but when we add our glass in, it'll be in the center of the area. So don't worry about it. All right, now at this point here, so on the same block above our sea lantern, we can chuck in some stone slabs to kind of hold our little secondary ledge with some sand on it. You can really customize this. You can put this on the other side. You can put it like on this side. You can do whatever the hell you want with it, but I'm just going to keep it similar to the one in the tour. So I'm going to put some sand on top of this and then we're going to head down and then I'm going to add the same kind of L shape on this side and then replace all of the ground here with some sand, not including this layer here as our glass blocks are going to be going on top of this. Now we're gonna fill up the entire front with some glass blocks and we're just, yeah, going to be extending this all the way up to the top and uh, yeah. And now comes the tricky part, which is actually filling up the aquarium with water. So to do this, I'd recommend kind of just excavating a bit of a tunnel above the area here and then extend our scaffolding all the way up so we can actually get in there. Then while we're above here, let's remove a couple of blocks and then we're just gonna have to keep coming back and forth and just emptying water buckets and we're gonna have to make sure that we place them in every single section so we can jump down in here we place one here here as well and then also along the sides in front of the glass and then directly below our sea lantern as well. Now let's head down and we're also going to be filling in these slabs as well with some water so that they're waterlogged and everything looks normal. And now we're going to get some seagrass, some bone meal and also some different types of coral. It's up to you which ones you want to use. And then we're just going to kind of add them around randomly. I'm just going to keep it similar to the tour. So I'm going to place these like so and then I'm also going to chuck one of these right here and we'll chuck one of these over here as well. And now heading up to this one we're also going to place a tall seagrass here and then a normal seagrass and then a tube coral and then we're going to add a bubble coral fan right here. And that's it for the interior of the aquarium. Now it's just time to add in your fish. However you want to do that, it's up to you. I'm just going to do it the easy way because I can. And now with everything done, we can just seal back up our top here. Make sure to also replace these blocks and then we can head back down our scaffolding, fill up this tunnel that we excavated and then the last thing to do for the aquarium here is to add in a strip of slabs all the way across like so. And that's it for our aquarium. I don't know why our fish are going so crazy. I think I might have missed a water source maybe, but uh, yeah, there we go. That's it for the aquarium. Now heading over to the left section over here, we're going to be adding in our first smelting area. And for this one, we're going to have to excavate a one deep layer like so. Along the top, we're going to add in a strip of barrels. And then underneath the left and right side, we're going to add a slab. And then in front of those, a spruce trap door. Then one block below this, we're going to be placing in a slab right here. And to the left and right of this, a spruce trap door. And then on top of this, let's throw in a flower pot with a blue orchid. Along the bottom, let's add in a strip of furnaces. On top of the left furnace here, let's throw in a campfire and extinguish it. And then on the right side, we're going to throw in a large amethyst bud. And then we're also going to chuck a lantern right here. And while we're at it, we can just quickly add this lantern into each section. It's just in the center of each section on the slab blocks here. It just saves us from doing it for every single section, I guess. Into our next section, we're going to be adding our storage area. And for this one, we're going to be excavating a two deep layer. And we're also going to be excavating this top layer as well. And if you have your redstone showing here, what we're going to be doing is covering it up with some stone stairs all the way across and then in front of these we're going to be covering up the dirt with some stone slabs and now we're just filling up this entire area with some double chests it's as simple as that 
You might have to remove part of the wall here in order to actually place in the final chest. And there we go, that's it for our first storage area. And now we're pretty much going to be repeating this exact same thing in this section. So we're removing a too deep layer, except this time you'll notice that our hopper is up here and we're gonna be connecting this directly up to a chest. And something I actually messed up, which is my bad, is we're gonna have to be replacing these blocks here with some stone stairs. So that means we're gonna have to redo our rail system that's up there, unfortunately. So we're just gonna be replacing these blocks beside the hopper with some stone stairs. And then in front of these, we're gonna be replacing them with some stone slabs. And then we can quickly head back up here, remove these glass blocks and just quickly add our rails back in nice and easy. And there we go, we're all done. Now let's drop back down and just do the same thing we did over there, add in all of our double chests. And that's it for our storage area. And just to showcase how this works, if we turn this lever on and we can just quickly grow a sugarcane block so that it can get harvested. I actually need to make that go up one higher. Now with the glass here, it should be absorbed into the hopper thing and then it'll get fed directly into the chest down here, nice and easy. Next onto our crafting area. For this one, we're gonna be removing a one deep layer. And you'll notice we have this kind of weird gap up here and all that we're gonna be doing to fix it is just remove these stone blocks and then fill in all of these blocks with slabs and then we're just gonna extend these down to the same height as these slabs here. Now, firstly, along the bottom, let's add in a barrel. To the right of that, a smithing table, then a crafting table, a loom, and then finally another barrel at the end here. On top of our smithing table, let's add in a large amethyst bud. And then above these, we're gonna be adding some nice little shelves. But before we do, let's actually add a checkered pattern in behind the wall here. And we're gonna be doing this with just the stone that's here and then also some polished andesite, starting in the top left corner. And then, yeah, just add in a checkered pattern like so. I'm kind of messing it up big time. What the hell am I doing? There we go, that's how it should look. Now at the top left, let's add in a slab here and coming away from it, a spruce trapdoor, and we're gonna do the same thing down over here as well. Now on top of our top left one, let's add in a stone cutter and then a grindstone. And to place this one, we're gonna have to stand on top of this shelf and place it like this so that it's facing a nice way. And then on top of this shelf here, we're just gonna simply add in an anvil. And then to the left of that, a flower pot with an azalea. And that's it for our crafting section. Moving over to the left, we're gonna be adding in our super smelter. And this one is going to be spanning over two of these sections here. And for our first section, we're gonna be excavating two blocks deep. And we're also gonna be extending this one block into the ceiling. And then on the left side, we're just excavating this one by three blocks. And with all that excavated, your sections should be looking somewhat like this. Now let's firstly start off in our right side section. And to start off, we're gonna be adding in a strip of strip spruce wood all the way up to the ceiling here. Up the top here, we're gonna be adding in a chest. And to make sure this is openable we're going to be replacing these blocks here with just some slabs instead of full blocks and then let's add in our double chest then behind this let's remove these six blocks let's add some stone slabs here directly behind the top chest and then we're going to be placing a double chest below these slabs to ensure that they're actually openable which is why we added the slabs in and then below this we're going to be adding in a powered rail on the right and then a regular rail on the left and let's also remove these two blocks and add in some rails in these blocks now directly below our first double chest let's add in two slabs like so and then on top of the first slab, a powered rail on top of the second one, a regular rail. And then for our final chest down here, we're just going to be adding in a double chest like so. Then let's chuck in a lever right here, directly to the right of our frontmost rails. And then behind it, let's remove these blocks and chuck in a redstone dust here and replace this block. And then this lever should now power both of our minecart tracks. Now on the right side here, we're just going to be adding in some regular furnaces down the bottom. Above this, let's add in a nice little shelf design here with a slab and a trapdoor. And then we're going to do the same thing up here as well, except it's going to be on the opposite side. And then on top of this one here, let's add in some blast furnaces and on top of the topmost one, some smokers. And now all that's left to do on this section here is just add in our minecart hoppers on top of the powered rails like so. And now let's head over to our left section and add in the actual super smelter part. So one block space below this rail here. So right here, we're gonna be adding in our row of furnaces standing like this so that they're all facing outwards. Then let's jump behind the furnaces here and add in some hoppers that are all pointing towards the back of the furnaces. And then we can also add in some more hoppers pointing directly downwards. And then to fix up our rails here, we can just remove these two and then we're just gonna extend this rail all the way down to the end, placing a powered rail at the end. And then we're also gonna place another powered rail up here. Then we're gonna need a couple of levers to power these or you could use redstone torches, it's up to you. So we're gonna be adding in our first lever behind this one here. And then our second lever can just be behind this one as well. And then we're just gonna replace all of the stone blocks like so. Then we can connect these rails all the way up, jump back over here, place in our last hopper and then just add in your last rails like so. Then heading back down here, we can remove 
this block, which should be connected directly up to our output chest, and then we're just gonna connect up some hoppers all the way along like so. And now that's it for all of the logistics of the super smelter. Just a side note, if you wanted to extend this and have this be larger than just five furnaces, all you have to do is just pretty much excavate a giant tunnel out to the left, and then just repeat this exact same design over to the left. You might have to add some more powered rails along the way, and you can just power them with maybe some blocks in front of them like so, and chuck on a lever on the side or something like that. But now to finish up the super smelter, all we're gonna be doing is adding in a big rectangle of glass on the front face here. And then in front of it, let's add in some spruce stairs in the corners. And then in front and below all of those, we're gonna be adding some spruce trapdoors. And that's it for our entire super smelter. Okay, and heading over to the left once again, we're going to be excavating four blocks deep this time. So one, two, three, four, and we're gonna be doing that across all three back sections here. So you're gonna have to grab out the Giga Chad pickaxe once again, and yeah, just excavate everything. And now with our area excavated, let's first add in our pillars, and these are pretty much just directly behind the existing pillars here, and these are all the way at the back. So just add in two pillars like so. Then in between all of these, we're gonna be adding a bunch of barrels all the way across. And then underneath all of these sections, we're first gonna be adding in a spruce slab in the center, and then some spruce trap doors coming away from it. And then yeah, just repeat this in each section. Now with that done, we're gonna add in a nice checkered pattern in the back walls here and using some polished andesite. So firstly, starting off in the bottom left corner, we're just going to continue adding our checkered pattern like so and not messing it up. And then just, yeah, repeat this in each section. Now with that done, let's add in our fences and fence gates. So between each of these pillars here, we're gonna add in some fences and then finally a fence gate and do the same in between these two pillars as well. Then all the way along the front here, we're going to go back and forth between fence gates and fences, starting with fence gates, and just in a pattern like so, and repeat this in each section. Now let's head inside one of our sections and then we're going to pretty much be replacing all of the stone blocks that aren't directly underneath the fences and fence gates here, with some grass. And then you can also add in some grass in some random places if you want, just to kind of make it look more homely for the animals. And then, yeah, we're just going to repeat this in every section, of course. And uh, there we go. That's it for the animal pens. It's up to you on how you want to bring the animals in here. I don't really know how you're going to do that. That's for you to figure out. And now it's on to our final section. For this one, excavate two blocks deep. Then we're going to be adding a ring of obsidian all the way around like so, and then replacing the floor blocks here with obsidian instead of just adding them in like this, as it's not going to work. Then on the middle left and middle right blocks, we're going to be removing these blocks. On the blocks directly behind the obsidian, let's add in some redstone. And then to the left and right of those, let's add in some dispensers. And then we're also gonna chuck some buttons on these obsidian blocks as well. And when you press the button, you should hear the dispenser click on both sides. Then on the left one, let's add in a flint and steel. And on the right one, a water bucket. Don't press these again yet. Let's first add in our fences and fence gates. So firstly, some fences on the left and right, and then in between these, some fence gates. And then to test out your system, flick the left button, should turn the portal on, and then flick this one twice to deploy the water bucket and then to absorb the water bucket. And that's it for all of our sections. Now all that's left to do is add in our roof lanterns and also our floor design, which is really easy to do. So let's get started. So just choose a random pillar and we're going to count three blocks away from it in towards the center of the base. So one, two, three. And on this third block here, we're going to be digging downwards. Then starting from here, we're going to be creating just basically a giant ring around the base, making sure that we're always two blocks away from a pillar like so. And then yeah, let's just keep going around the entire base. So there we go, that's the ring created. Now we're just gonna be excavating all of the stone in the center of this ring. Now with our ring excavated, we're gonna go all the way around and just add in some spruce slabs all on the outermost edge. And now it's time to add in our checkered pattern of netherite and polished andesite, or either basalt and polished andesite, or whatever blocks you want. I don't really care. And we're gonna be starting this off in whatever corner you want, and we're starting off with the block of netherite, or the darker block, or whatever you want. And now let's extend this in towards the center diagonally by three. And then let's just quickly do this in each corner. Now for each of these, let's just extend them out like this, and then we're gonna connect them up as well, just like this, and do the same in each section. And there we go, that's pretty much the basic pattern done. All we need to do now is replace all of the stone blocks with some polished andesite. And there we go, that's it for our floor pattern. I didn't really know what to add into the center here, so you could add like a little statue or something you wanted, or you could even just extend the checkered pattern all the way inside. I kind of liked leaving a little ring there, and you guys can decide whatever you want to do. All right, now the only thing left to do in the base is just add in our roof lanterns. So let's head back over to our elevator, head up the right side, and then to line these up, all we're gonna be doing is pretty much, these are gonna be placed in line with the balcony 
out on the very edge, except they're gonna be one block over, like in line with these slabs down here, I guess. So we're gonna look straight up in the center here, look straight up, and then we're gonna go one block back and place in our lantern. It should be one block over to the edge. I don't know how to explain this, so I hope that makes sense. Now for the corner blocks, all we have to do is just stand right here on this corner and then like go here and just place it right there. It should be two blocks away from the edges. That should make it easier. And yeah, pretty much just do this in every single section. And just like that, we're completely done with the ultimate underground base. So if you enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to leave a like. Also subscribe if you want to see future tutorials just like this one. I'll see you guys in the next video.